In order to use our Roland GS24 vinyl cutter, um, you're first going to need to learn how to use Roland Cut Studio, which is the software used to create either import or create graphics and then send them over to the vinyl cutter to be cut out. Um, when you go to the computer to start it up, you'll see this Roland logo here in the bottom. Um, and it's Roland Cut Studio, all one word, or you can go to the start menu and kind of look for it there. Um, what you'll notice is the display on the screen has this what looks like a sheet of paper with grid pattern on it um, and it shows a 23 inch wide by in this case um, has kind of not an infinite length but the length is kind of irrelevant for us because we have infinite length of roll so we can kind of make this as long as we want but the important part is that this is 23 inches wide which is going to be the max width of the graphic that you make if you want to orient it in that direction. So the first thing we're going to do is go over here to the left hand side and you'll see this there's, there's a toolbar and we have some different options. Um, we have our selection tools up top and our zoom tool. We have the text tool, the rectangle tool, the circle ellipse tool, our polygon tool, star tool, and then also the polyline and curve tool. Um, most of the time for what we'll, we will be doing, you're going to stick to text and maybe so, maybe either the circle or the rectangle. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and click on the text tool, and I'm going to add a text to my workplace here, and we're going to go and type in, this is a test. Now that we have our text on the page, I'm going to go back over and uh, use the select button up here to get rid of the cursor and I can click on my text and when I do that if I click and hold I can drag it around um, and move it position it wherever I like. If I want it in the bottom left corner there is this move button up at the top which is move to origin so if I select the graphic and hit move to origin it's going to take it in the bottom left hand corner as far down as it can go and still actually cut properly. So um, generally when you're done with your completely done with your graphic, you're going to want to move it to the origin. Um, but I want to edit my text here a little bit. So if I use the scroll wheel, I can zoom in and out. And if I hold the scroll wheel, I can and I can drag the page around as well. So I'm actually going to drag this away from the origin just for now so it's a little easier to work with. And I'm going to select it and go up to the properties panel up here in the top right. Um, when you do that, you have some different options, different tabs up here. You have size and shape, position, line style and color, which uh, generally we won't mess with, and then format. And that's where we really want to go and take a look. And in format, you this is where you're going to change font sizes and everything else that you may want to change. So Arial is the default font, which usually works pretty well. But you can go down here and select anything you want. So I'll try Broadway here. And you can see a preview that pops up in the properties win window. And if I hit OK, it'll update my text here on the actual uh, workspace as well. Um, I'm, I kind of like Arial, so I'm going to put it back in Arial. Get back up there and select Arial. Hit OK just so I can see it on the screen. And then I'll go back to properties one more time. Um, you have some options here for boldness on the right hand side you can see the preview it just kind of shows what it's going to do as you increase the boldness generally for what we do we're going to leave this at normal um, there may be a couple instances where you use it but generally this will kind of stay in the normal range uh, if we want to change the height of the text it defaults to this 0.7874 so let's say we're going to change it to an uh, inch and a half so I'll do 1.5 and hit OK and you can see obviously on the screen that your size increases and gives the actual letter height a value of 1.5 so this is the actual size that it'll come out on the vinyl cutter when it cuts it out um, I want to go ahead and put that back a little bit smaller um, I'm not going to go to 0.7874 which is the default I want to go to 0.75 so if you highlight this well you'll notice if you go ahead and put the point in first it's going to give you this error that says enter a number um, and Basic, I'm not exactly sure why it's programmed this way, but basically it's reading that point and there's no number value so it can't assign a text height. So if you hit, hit OK and then go back in there and finish filling in your number, that'll work. Also, if you 
don't want to deal with that, you can just type in, I want to use 0.75, so I can type in 75 and then cursor back over and add my decimal place in there as well after the fact. And hit OK, and then I'll bring our size back down. Let's go back to properties again. Um, have some different things you can do in here. Um, character spacing, so the spacing in between actual letters. So let's um, try, let's say, 85%. You can kind of see what that looks like. And pay close attention to the letters as they change. You'll notice they scrunch up. So if you zoom in, you can see you still have space, in this case, between the letters, but they're a lot closer together, so they'll take up a lot less space. Um, looks like we might have an issue over here where the E and the S are touching. But um, I, I am fine with it at 100%, so I'm going to jump back in, change this to 100%, and hit Enter. Get that back to its normal size. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to Properties again. Um, the other option you have here is Align with Curve. So if you select Align with Curve, and you'll notice that you can align to the bottom of the letters, to the center of the letters, or to the top of the letters. And I'm going to say with bottom for right now and hit OK. And this adds a curve to your text to allow you to kind of wrap it around a circle or a graphic or something like that and kind of gives you some flexibility there for doing that. And it's really easy if you were to do this in another graphic software, it's a lot more involved to get that to work. And this one's just kind of a click of a button, which is kind of nice. But I'm going to go ahead and go back to properties and I'm going to uncheck align with curve because I don't need that for right now and hit OK. And I want to show you kind of the line spacing here. So let's go to the end here and I'm going to type another line that says the same thing. And I'm going to go back to my selection option and I'm going to select that and go to graphics. Or I'm sorry, properties. And notice the big gap in spacing between lines. If I want to narrow that down, because that's, that's in my mind kind of unnecessary in most cases. So let's change the line spacing to 80% and hit enter and you immediately notice that that bottom line comes much closer to that top line. You still have plenty of space in between the letters, but it's much closer. So if you need to do this for some reason, um, that's, that's the place that you'll do it. I'm going to go ahead and put that back to 100% for right now. And then finally, you can um, change the width of the letters as well. So if you pay close attention to these letters, I'm going to change this to just to be give it a dramatic difference, change this to 50% and hit OK. It's, it's basically like taking the letters from the side and scrunching them together. So if, you, if you're really close on fitting on width and just need to scrunch it down a little bit, you can change this by a couple percent. Or if you just like the look of the scrunched letters, you can do that as well. Um, I'm going to put that back to 100% though. And you also have text alignment well. So if you need left, cent or left align, center align, right align, or justify, um, you can do that here as well. But I'm going to leave everything the way it is and hit OK. So the next thing I'll do is bring in a shape. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to click and drag a rectangle to add a boundary to my text. I'm going to go back to my selection tool over here. I'm going to intentionally move this off center. I kind of eyeballed it on center, but I'm going to intentionally move this off center. Uh, most of the time, you're going to want your graphics and text aligned either vertically or horizontally. So what I'm going to do, I have this rectangle selected. I'm going to hold the shift key and select the text as well. And I have, you notice I have both of them selected. Then if I go to object and align, I can align these left and right and top to bottom. So I want to center them left to right first. So that brings the text and it's perfectly centered left to right. And then I want to align it top to bottom as well. So the text is in the middle of the in the dead middle of this box, both left to right and top to bottom. So if I go to object again, align, and then the second option is top and bottom, and I'm going to center that there as well. You notice it moved just a little bit. So, so it's super easy to align things and make sure that they're centered properly and everything like that. And then I'm going to click and drag a box around these and select them. And if I wanted to cut this out, then I would select them, select the move to origin, and then I'd be ready to cut this. Um, the next thing we want to do, though, is import a graphic, an actual logo, and um, kind of prep that for the vinyl cutter so you have an idea of what that's going to look like. So if you go to File and Import, you can import a image. So I'm going to go ahead and use this White Sox logo here just as an, uh, an example. So I'll hit Open. 
I'm going to drag this over here to the side. Um, now, it, one note is that this is a copyrighted image. So I'm using this as an example just to show you something you can do. Obviously, anything that's copyrighted, you can't produce in mass quantity and sell or anything like that. So just be wary of the copyright issues there um, and only use things that you own the copyrights to. I'm going to go ahead and go to image outline. So if you right click on the image and select image outline, what we need to do is this is a JPEG image or a pixel based image and we need to change this to a vector file or mathematically based line so that we can translate that over to the vinyl cutter. So when you do image outline, it gives you this, this uh, pop up box and it allows you to basically take that JPEG image and create an outline using the edges of that JPEG image. So it's basically going to use the colors to figure out where the edges of these letters are, for instance, or the shapes up here, and then create a vector graphic using that. So in this, men in this menu here, you can, um, this extract contour lines is the button you want to use. And if you select that, you'll notice these blue lines that will show up, and those are going to be your vector graphics it's going to generate. Um, you can mess with the line image density and then that will kind of impact you notice the white disappears so it kind of impacts where it actually sees the graphics and and um, which graphics it actually chooses to make your vector files out of so i like it right here i'm going to select extract contour lines once again and and then hit ok and you'll notice that that graphic the vector icon pops up on top of that image so i can click and drag this off and I have the outline of that image and I can actually right click on the image now and delete it. And I have the outline of the graphic. So now when I send this over to the vinyl cutter, it's going to cut right on those lines. So it's an easy way to take a image you may have had of a logo or something you designed, bring it in, create a vector graphic of it real quick that you can send over to the vinyl cutter and cut out. So I'm just going to drag this over here. And actually, I'm going to put it to the right of my test graphic. And I want to go ahead and cut out both of these. So once I have these aligned where I want, got all my graphics laid out, all my vectors good to go, next thing you're going to do is go to the cutting button. And all, when you are connected, I'm not currently connected to the vinyl cutter, but when you are connected to it, you should see the Roland GS24 here up top. And um, you'll have you'll see the graphics here just like you do. And this OK button will not be grayed out. It'll be uh, selectable. And when you do that, it's going to send your graphics over to the vinyl cutter. Now, before you can do this, there are some there's some setup you need to do on the vinyl cutter, which um, will be talked about in another video or um, in a live demo if you are looking to learn this machine and use it.